Hello, my name is Amy of Pin and Ply. Um, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I thought today I would do a knitting podcast episode. Um, I thought it'd be nice to kind of maybe aim to do them at the end of each month, basically. Um, so we are on the 28th of January now, so I thought I've made some progress. I've actually done some knitting, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, I thought we could just talk about what I've been knitting on in January. So the first item that I was going to talk to you about is the one that I am wearing. So this is my finished Burgos vest by Rosa po Pomar. 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 I still don't know how to say her name, I'm sorry. Um, so this is knitted out of my own hand-spun Jacob's Cross. It's in quite a chunky weight yarn, um, but it's very lofty. So it is perfect for this vest. This is This has come out exactly as I'd hoped, um, in terms of kind of giving me, you know, it's kind of um, knitted up as quite a nice thick but lofty fabric, um, so it is perfect for just throwing on as an extra layer to keep my body warm, um, but gives me the breathability because there's no, obviously no sleeves and it's got quite a nice deep, um, deep armholes. Um, I'm finding it really breathable to wear, so it's, yeah, perfect. So if you remember back in my reflections video at the start of January, um, I had nearly finished this item. Um, all I needed to do was pick up and knit the collar, bar, uh, collar band um, and make and attach the buttons. Um, I find it really helpful actually, having done that reflections video, it, it kind of like helped me refocus I think with my knitting and I was just like this is such little work like this is mad that it's been sat there for a few weeks like just waiting to be finished um so I think I did it that week maybe um or at least did the collar band um so as I as I sort of suspected I didn't enjoy picking up for the collar band it's just this thing of you know you're trying to pick up a given number of stitches over the over the distances and you know that whole thing of picking up three and five or three and four um i don't know it i just find it really difficult um i had to rip back sort of halfway a few times because whatever i'd done on one side i could not match it to the other side um it sounds like it should be really easy but i just always really struggle with it so please please let me know I'm not alone in that um or maybe you've got some tips for me <laughs> um but yeah so I I did that um I changed a little bit what the from what the instructions said about the actual buttonholes um the way that they were described kind of said you know knit a bit make a buttonhole knit a bit more make a buttonhole but I couldn't understand where those slits were going to sit in the ribbing so this is two by two ribbing um and i had a look on ravelry at other finished product projects um and i realized that it was sitting in the pearl side the knit side the pearl side you know like in the in between um and i really wanted it to sit inside the um the pearl pearl side of the ribbing um can you see that there Hang on. so all of my buttonholes are now inside of the pearls rather than jumping around um it did mean that i ended up wanting to add four buttonholes rather than the three that was just in the pattern but actually when I do up that top button um it's it's, it's um kind of 
it makes it closed and kind of like cover my chest quite nicely. Um, sorry, refocus. Um, yeah, so I find that it, it kind of, yeah, it wraps me up really well. Whereas if it, you know, if that top button had been a bit lower, then it might have felt a bit more kind of like that. Um, yeah, so I made, so yeah, so I knit the collar band, um, washed and blocked it and it just, oh, it just, it's just that thing, isn't it, where everything then just sits nicely, the stitch is even out, all of the kind of like the ribbing kind of then just behaved itself. Um, it did take several days for this to dry because there is, it's just, the fabric is so thick. Um, I did weigh it and it came out at 350 grams, um, which I thought, you know, is such a nice, yeah, like it is, it is quite lightweight. Um, I'm quite curious to do a comparison with like unspun yarns because um, to me it's kind of a similar gauge to that. Um, maybe it's a little bit heavier, but not not much. So yeah, it, oh god, <laughs> can you tell that I really like it? <laughs> so then it was time to make the buttons, um, which I'd had plenty of time to think about, like how I was going to do it. Um, but I knew that it was going to be one of those things of try something and then see whether that gives the result that I was after. Um, and yeah, I had enough wood to kind of experiment with. Um, this is completely inspired by uh, We Grow Wild. Um, I think she's called Martina, I think. Um, lovely podcast. And she, um, yeah, she'd been making some buttons a little while ago. Um, and I just thought, well, yeah, I've got plenty, plenty of wood kicking around and we've got the tools to, to make whatever. Um, so I thought this was the perfect project to give it a go. Um, yeah, so the first thing that I did was strip off the bark, off the piece of wood. Um, I decided that I didn't really want that level of rustic finish. <laughs> I wanted it to be slightly more refined than that. Um, so yeah, I stripped off the bark. Um, and then we used, my partner is into bonsai, so we've got various different um, little saws and tools and stuff like that um, that he lets me borrow. Um, so we used, he's kind of got this little, fine little Japanese saw. Um, so I used that to cut it into discs. Yeah, I probably should have used a... Um, jig or a clamp or something to um, support the wood as I was cutting it but it was fine for what we were trying to do. So the first thing I then tried was to actually sand um, the discs. So I both tried to sand the face of it and then the sort of outside edge and then also to try and introduce a bit of a, a chamfer, a bit of a, yeah a chamfer to the edges um, just to soften it up a little bit um, but what we quite quickly realised was that we <laughs> we only had sort of quite coarse and then really really fine um, bits of sandpaper which just meant that it was yeah it was going to take a long time and we probably should have should have then bought different sandpaper to use it um, so then my partner does a lot of uh, green woodworking um, so he's got a delightful sharp um, knife. <laughs> um, so he showed me how to use the knife to do the chamfered edge to the buttons. Um, which, yeah, by, by the time I'd made four buttons, um, I was getting quite good at it, I think. Um, I realised I could save time a little bit by doing a better job at the um, stripping the bark stage. So I kind of went back and like tried to clean that up so that it was really, really smooth um, before sawing it into discs um, so that that would save me time then um, at the finishing stage. So the only thing about not using the sandpaper was that I was left with the saw marks. Um, now, because of the saw I'd used, the saw marks were pretty minimal. 
um, or at least not distracting. Now if you, you could get an even finer um, tooth size. <laughs> You can tell that I'm not really a woodworker. Um, so yeah, you could you could get a a smaller a, a smaller toothed saw, and then that would give you an even smoother finish. Um, and so you would see less of those lines from the saw marks. But I was quite I didn't really mind it for for what I was going for. I kind of wanted the buttons to look handmade, but not too handmade. Um, <laughs> the sort of there was like a level of refinement that I was after. So once I was happy with the sort of the outside edge, um, I just needed to then drill two holes for me to then be able to sew the buttons on. Um, we only had one casualty um, in drilling the holes, and that was just because I wasn't really paying attention. I had a small crack um, in one of the buttons. And yeah, where I drew, where I drilled the hole, um, it just then, um, that crack just uh, gave way. Um, but it was probably a good job that I got rid of that one because yeah, I mean, that, that would have been a vulnerability um, and it could have, could have broken whilst I was wearing it, which would have been annoying. And then the final stage was to then, um, I decided to oil the buttons. Um, I kind of thought that it would give it, again, a bit more of a refined finish. Um, I used a walnut oil, um, which you can get in a lot of supermarkets. I think we got ours from like M&S or Waitrose or something. Um, again, we've got the walnut oil because of my partner's uh, green woodworking. Um, the only thing with walnut oil is I think you're supposed to cure it. Um, so it did have a bit of a... Uh, a stint on the radiator and in the oven um, and then I just got impatient after two days um, and just wanted to get them on the item. I had started wearing the vest at this point, um, like as soon as it was dry enough I was wearing it, um, but I really wanted to get the buttons on so that I could have it closed um, just to kind of give me that like that wrap around, that full warmth that I knew it could give. Um, so I decided, I had a look at different uh, bits of yarn that I had. I knew it was going to be too, the the yarn that I knitted it out of, I knew was going to be too um, chunky to sew the buttons on. So I looked at what little bits of scraps I had um, and I quite liked the look of this natural brown grey sort of colour uh, from Woolly Knits, their four ply British wool. Um, and so I just did what I would do if I was sewing on a button. Um, so kind of just went, uh, <laughs> I don't know, a few times and then did that thing where you then wrap the yarn, um, sort of around in between the button and your fabric, sort of wrap it around and then it means that the button is then stood more proud of your fabric so that when you then button it up there is space for the other side of your garment to then sit as like this three layered sandwich thing um and then yeah knotted it on the back and then wove my ends in um and i'm really really happy with the way that it's come out um i just think that the color of the yarn the color of the buttons and that bit of yarn to thread it on um like it just works um, but as I, <laughs> I was sort of talking to my dad about it and we were like, well, yeah, it works because it's all natural materials. Like nature, like everything just goes with everything else. Um, so this was a piece of cherry wood, uh, that was destined for our, um, for our log burner. Um, but yeah, it's just, oh God, I love it. Um, so I don't think I've taken this off basically. Um, I've worn it every day <laughs> um, since since I got the buttons on, well, since it was dry. Um, it's just that perfect piece to just throw on it over everything because it's sort of um, quite a sort of loose boxy fit. It doesn't really matter what you've got on underneath. It just, yeah, it just fits. Um, and as I say, it just gives me that extra little bit of warmth, but without then overheating. Um, so yeah, I'm, so happy with it. 
Um, I even wore it gardening this week and sort of like it was, I don't know, five, seven degrees um, the last two days and degrees Celsius. Um, I had on merino base layer, my Rapa Nui, like lamb's wool jumper, dungarees, this layer and then a fleece and I was like just warm enough. <laughs> Um, but no, it was really nice to have that as the layering piece then. Um, so yeah, you'll be seeing me wearing this garment a lot, I think, now. So we also have one half finished object. Um, so I, <laughs> I keep saying to Matt that I'm going to get these socks finished. Um, and I've got one finished. So we, <laughs> we have one complete sock. Um, so the, in my reflections video, I think I'd gotten up to somewhere around here. Um, I had a little bit of the foot to go and then the uh, toe shaping. Um, I'm trying to think, when did I finish it? I remember I was working on it when we were on holiday, which was like middle of January. Um, I think I did finish it then because I remember wondering whether I could remember how to do Kitchener Stitch or not um, without looking it up because um, we didn't have much internet where we were <laughs> but I think I did I did end up trying to look it up first because there's the tricks that um, Summerly, Summerly Knits Designs, Summerly Designs um, she's got for how to avoid having pointy, pointy rabbit ears or something I think she calls it um, so I wanted to double check what her tips were but I think I've now written it out I want to I'm trying to make my um well everything but my knitting in particular like back to being on paper so that like if I I'm trying to knit to get away from the screen I don't at any point need to then get a screen out to look something up so I've sort of written like wrote out a couple of like um cheat sheets to help me remember certain techniques um anyway so we have one finished sock. So I've done the toe shaping according to his toes. Um, so which seems to, he seems to be pretty happy with that. Um, and then I started the second one. Um, so <laughs> when, I, when I first cast on, oh my word, it was feeling so slow. Um, and what I ended up doing, and I know that, like this is nothing new, but I decided to use progress markers, and I don't normally do it at all, um, but I just needed something to help me to kind of like, well, it turned into a target basically. I ended up using two progress markers, um, and I was using it to measure how much am I knitting today versus how much did I knit yesterday. Um, and that worked for me. <laughs> um, turns out competing with myself is great. Um, so yeah, so that got me through the, sorry, I'll hold it that way. That got me through the knitting the leg. Um, and it just feels slow because it's like 76 stitches on two millimeter or even 1.75 millimeter needles doing two by two rib. So it's like, yeah, slowest of the slow. Um, but yeah, I managed to finally finish the leg. Um, and then, what, this week then, um, I've moved on to doing the heel flap. Um, I just need to go back to my notes now and double check how many, um, how many rows, yeah, rows of heel flap that I did for the first one. Um, and then yeah, we're gonna be away. So still not, he didn't get socks for Christmas. He didn't get socks before holiday or during holiday. Um, but maybe he'll have socks by the end of February. I, I should, I shouldn't need more than four weeks now. It should only be like a week or two. Okay, let's see, I am, nearly like that's the one that I've that's the project that I've been picking up every day this week um and as I say just trying to get just you know like an inch worth of knitting on it um but yeah it's going well so the 
final project that I was going to talk to you about today was my penguono. So this is my hand spun scrappy penguono project. Um, I talked about it in my reflections video at the beginning of January um, and then also what two weeks ago um, I did a video where I was having to um, spin some more yarn so that I could knit the other front side. So I'd um, yeah at the start of January we'd got as far as I'd done the back panel, I'd come around the side and I'd done one of the fronts um, and then I'd yeah beginning of January I'd spun up yarn for the other front um, and then I had a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a moment where I realized that I'd not spun to the right spec so you can go back and watch that video as I try and get my head around um, the different gauges that I was dealing with different yarn specs how do we even measure yarn um, from a spinning point of view um, but yes in the end <laughs> I got there. Um, so I can show you. This is my new front side. So I am so pleased with how the um, like the colours have turned out and the sort of this variation that I'm getting of kind of light and dark patches. Um, I think holding the two strands together where the second strand, the really thin yarn, was like mostly white or cream has kind of just made this uh, variation in the other bits of yarn just much softer and I really like this kind of like mauled um, effect that I'm getting. Um, I ended up, I haven't used everything, so this is what I've got left so I think, which way round is it? Oh God, I'm not even sure now. That's definitely, that brown is definitely the original stuff. And that was the, the extra bit of cream, thin cream that I then spun up to match it. I'm not actually sure what that one was, whether that's the light, it looks pretty thin. Maybe I took notes. I don't know. Anyway, I've got this much <laughs> this much yarn left to do some more bits of it with. Um, but yeah, I managed to knit up the um, this other front panel. Um, I messed up at one point again because of my note taking. Um, I hadn't realised that when I'd knit up the other side, you're knitting effectively you're knitting this way, um, which corresponds to knitting this way. So you've got this bit here where you're doing decreases and in the pattern, the decreases are like three stitches in. So you end up with like this, your sort of garter lines, it sort of has a, has a bend, has a kink in it here. Um, but I didn't do that the first time. <laughs> I must've moved my decreases, must've decided I didn't like the look of it. Um, I'd moved my decreases to the actual edge rather than three stitches in um, which I'd you know I didn't know about so I just followed the pattern um, and yeah I looked at it and went oh this doesn't match anymore um, so I ripped back um, and did it again um, but <laughs> as I said to my partner I was just like I get to knit it again like <laughs> I just really really enjoyed working with this yarn like it was just yeah making me so so happy um so I was quite happy to to have to go again um so yeah we've got we've got our second front um the next little bit then that you move on to is you knit these like shoulder shoulder bits um and again, I decided to go do my own thing. I don't know why I keep doing this. Um, I don't know why I think that I know better, but no, it's not that I know better. It's just for my project, it was telling me to do something different. Um, so anyway, I've so far just, these are my two fronts, um, 
knitted these two panels so I picked up along here and here and then have sort of knitted back. Um, I also changed what stitch it was. Um, I was kind of conscious that I think the way that they had you do it was it was going to be garter but stitched this way. So you were going to have just rows of garter here which in my mind ran the risk then that the weight of your sleeve was just going to really like stretch out your shoulder um, which I was not super keen on um, so I was like what stitch is a little bit more rigid um, so I had a go, I just did um, moss stitch just the single version you know, where it's knit, knit one, purl one and then alternate it so it's purl one, knit one on the next side um, uh, got this nice texture so this is I think the same yarn that I used for my like in betweeny side panel um, which I'm not sure what it is um, don't know um, some brown stuff basically um, Although it turned out that I'd spun this in like two different weights. So one side with one scrappy ball of yarn is just held single and then the other side is held double. Um, but yeah, it's kind of come out to be a similar-ish fabric. So the next step for that project is to sew the uh, other side down onto the back. Um, so yeah. So I'll do that next. Um, then I was planning on what am I going to use to knit the sleeves um, and also what stitch am I going to use. Uh, so I went back onto the Ravelry project page um, and like Penguin is such a popular pattern there are so many versions and obviously everyone's you know done their own thing with it so I was able to kind of go through and sort of see what did I like um, and one of my or one sort of stitch pattern that I'd seen a lot was then people using moss stitch on the sleeve, um, which I really liked. And I kind of, I think I'm gonna aim for like an extra long length that I can then turn up. Um, and it might almost be like, the default will be to have it turned up. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. So I didn't have any yarn ready for doing the sleeves. Um, I had a look through like what I had in my like fleece stash um, and I've got this uh, Zwartbulls uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with that um, fleece that I got off a family friend so this is just a handful of the fleece um, so this isn't particularly clean um, but yeah, it's this amazing dark, rich chocolate brown um, with these bleached tips. Right, apologies, my battery died. Um, so I've just been waiting for that to charge. So we're about an hour or so, <laughs> so later. Um, so what I was wanting to just show you was I, when I was trying to choose which uh, fleece to spin for this next part of the project, I kind of like had the the garment so far up and then I was holding different fleeces next to it um, and when I held this um, Zwartbulls next to it I'm trying to show you I don't know I just felt like it kind of like added added something else to this project um, but kind of still went with it. I was also thinking that for sleeves it would be quite good to have like a dark colour um, so you didn't have to worry about like oh I don't I don't like like worrying about if I'm leaning on a table if I'm gonna get like a, a muddy not a muddy <laughs> get a marked elbow or something maybe that's just me um, so yeah so I thought no I think this goes really nicely with the colours I've already got um, and it's a fleece that I kind of, you know, want an excuse to to have a little play with. Um, so I spun up, um, God, I don't know, enough for a swatch. Um, I spun this up, 
as a two ply, like everything I spin, um, and was trying to obviously now make a yarn that was kind of um, to match the rest of the project. But this time it was less critical because I'm because I'm just going to use this yarn for the sleeves, and I'm picking up for the armholes. It's like if the gauge is a little bit different to the rest of it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, so I spun this up and then knitted this swatch again in the moss stitch. And I just, oh, I love it. So it's sort of squishy um, and like, I don't know, it's sort of quite thick and chunky but flexible. Um, I just think it's going to make a really nice sleeve. I'm thinking it's going to be quite a big sleeve. I kind of don't really want, I don't, I'm not going to like narrow it too much, I don't think. Maybe like a little bit, yeah, sort of just nice big chunky sleeves. Um, because I just want this to be a proper cosy cardigan. Yeah, so the first sample has ticked all the boxes. Um, and again, like I really like it when you see it. When you see it next to the project, like, yeah, I just think it looks really good. Um, so I just need to spin up a big batch now to to knit the sleeves. Um, but it's just trying to prioritise that spinning time. Um, again, it's back to that thing now of like, this is spinning for me rather than spinning for business. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'll keep you posted on that project. So I think that's it for today. Um, so thank you for joining me. I hope you found that enjoyable. Um, so next week I'm hoping to come back with part two of my weaving project that I've currently got on the loom. Um, so if you haven't seen part one, I am making a cushion on the loom, um, I'm ha having a play around with an overshot method using a less long wool that I'd spun. Um, it's looking really, really nice. Um, uh, yeah, I was gonna do that video this weekend, um, but I have just been spinning all week um, and gardening, um, so I just literally haven't had time to weave anything. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that I'll I'll have time next week and yeah should hopefully have a finished cushion to show you so yeah i'm trying to post videos every week um if that's not enough for you then you can go and follow me on instagram where i am actually doing an all right job at posting most days um so you can kind of follow along with what i am working on on a day-to-day -day basis um but yeah until next time take care bye So if you enjoyed this video, then do all of the things. Ah, no, gross. Yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then like it, give me a comment, tell me what you think about my projects, um, tell your mates about it. Um, it's been really nice. No, gross. <laughs> <laughs>